I know this is going to be really difficult, but do you mind walking us through the events of the day that your son was killed? Oh, okay. I was working for New York City Transit. I'm a train operator. When you're on the trains, you're not allowed to have your phones on. So when, once I got off the train, as I turned my phone on, the phone is blowing up. So I called my husband, and when he told me, I think I just lost my mind. The reporters was downstairs at the door. I didn't want to talk to anyone. That night, my brother-in-law, he says, well, Gwen, I think maybe we should talk to one reporter. So they did, and they happened to talk to the Daily News. They says, well, now I just want to let y'all know that we, we have a video of everything that happened to Eric, and it's going to be on TV at 7 a.m. 7 o'clock, as they promised, it came on TV. When I seen that video, I, up until now, I have not been able to look at it in its entirety. And if not for some very positive people, like my family, the National Action Network, the Justice Committee, and so many others, I would have just laid there and, you know, I guess evaporated. But with the help of them, I was able to turn sorrow into a strategy and mourning into a movement because I made a promise to my son to be his voice and the voice of the voiceless and the nameless because there are plenty of people out there that's hurting just like I am. And, you know, we are looking for justice for our children.